Hey guys, welcome to another fun summer video tutorial with me, Claris. In today's video, we are going to be doing this simple, cute, and fun slice of watermelon. And we'll even add a little bit of daisies around here. All right, so uh, this was just a test run that I did. Uh, we're gonna be painting this pretty guy again on the Etcher watercolor postcards, cold press, 25% cotton paper, 300 GSM. And I really like these because they are rounded edges and I can do practice paints or just paintings in general over here. And then if I ever need a card, I have one handy. All right, so for the rest of the items that I'm using, my brushes, I'm, I have four of them handy just so I can move quickly and I don't lose out on the dampness of the paper. I've got Princeton number eight, number six. I've got Zen Art Supplies number eight and then Zen Art Supplies miniature round number one. I've got a palette ready over here, water ready on the side, and then my set of 36 white knights right over here. So really quickly, because I don't want to make this video too, too long, these are the colors I'm going to be using. I'll be using two reds for the watermelon, so we'll be using Ruby and Matter Lake Red Light. Then for the greens at the bottom, we're going to be using two greens again. It is going to be the regular, sorry, regular green for the absolute base, and then chromium oxide for just in between to give us that nice light gradient effect and then for the um, daisies we're going to be using a little bit of Payne's gray like very very watered down and then for the centers I'm using cadmium medium and then also maybe you can either use golden to show a little bit of shadow or maybe raw sienna or mars brown like any of the browns would be fine as well and uh, yeah that's that so let's begin I'm going to start off by mixing some color and I will use the number six to add my color onto my sheet. Let me just make sure that this is the right way. Let's do it this way. And then what I will do to dampen the area first before we go in with the color is use my Zen Art Supplies number eight and I'll just go in and create a triangular shape right over here. All right, so I'm going to zoom in for this so you all can see better. All right, so we're zoomed in. I'm going to use my number eight to dampen, but before we dampen, because this is 25% cotton, I just want to make sure I've got some of the carmine ready on my number six. So I'm just going to go ahead really quickly and get some carmine on my brush on the side. And then we are, I've got some on there right now. And now we're going in and we're creating our first, well, our only triangle. So here we go. So I'm going to about there. And I'm just doing the front facing triangle first and then we'll do the side after. And I'm bending over a little bit so I can see the shine and see exactly where it is damp because my next step is going to be taking my number six and going in and getting a nice bleed with it. So here we go, starting from the top, I'm gonna to pull it all the way down. And I'm just realizing, uh, instead of using the ruby, I've taken some of the carmine, so now I have a pink watermelon. You know what, let's go with the flow. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a pink watermelon. I've done two reds already. Let's make this a pink. So I'm getting more of the carmine on my brush and I am dabbing it around at the top and kind of pulling it down to the bottom. So I get a nice, beautiful dark at the top. You know how it's juiciest at the very center of the watermelon? That's what I'm looking for. And then I'm just gonna do this to pull down the pink 
or the carmine all the way down. And then maybe even just do this. And then I'm going to get some of the ruby because remember I said two different kinds of color, right? And I'm just going to add some of the ruby in here too just to kind of give us a nice light and dark give us some nice contrast, give us some nice blending happening here. And then just dipping the tip of the brush in water, I'm just loosely adding more of a dab, gentle loose dab across here. Perfect. But we want uh, dominant color to be at the top. So now what I'm doing is just taking this brush and dampening this area some more because now we're going to go in with that green that I mentioned and we're going to add it to the bottom. So for the green I'm using the number eight here and I'm getting a little bit of that green just a tad bit here and where I've dampened it with water I'm just going down here and I'm doing this. And this is where the magic happens, where it gives you that beautiful blend. So you're leaving all that area to be just water and you're only adding the green at the very bottom. And so what happens is it's blending in with that soft blend of pink or ruby that we have at the top. And then immediately I'm gonna take this guy, the miniature brush, get some of my green. And then ever so lightly add it to the bottom. Just a very thin sliver. And my hope for rushing and doing this before it dries up is that I get a little bit of a blend into this light green, the chromium oxide that we just laid down. And again, just to get that nice bleed happening over there. So there we go. That's the basic, basic idea of how to do this. Um, then really quickly you can sort of uh, pull down the pink if you want to, if it's still damp, into the green if you're looking to get that nice blend. You can also push up some of the pink. Again, it really depends on the paper you're using and if you are able to um, still move the color around while it is still damp. I'm just going to intensify some of the red at the top before I start doing the side here. And then we'll allow this to dry before we go in and add some of the, uh, which we we'll call it, the seeds. Okay, so now for the side over here, what I'm going to do is do the same technique. I'm going to dampen this area here um, like a rectangle, and then going in with this brush to add some of the. I'm going to add the ruby into it. And so what we want to do is instead of leveling this up. I'm going to add a slight slant to, oh, the slant didn't happen, it's too straight. A slight slant to sort of give it some perspective. And I'm going to also leave a little bit of white space happening between, between um, the front and the back that I'm just painting. Also, if you've got a little bit of dampness still happening and you touch to get a little bit of bleed, that would also be pretty. So go ahead and try that. And then at the bottom, it's just a little bit upward here again. And once I add the color, you'll see exactly what I mean. So maybe pause and see what it looks like before you try this, okay? All right, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and add my red my ruby here we go oh we didn't need to add too much red at the bottom because we're doing the green so i'm just going to go in and take off some of the color and water or just have it hover at the top over there actually no it'll dry up too 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 dark i'm going to get some more of that ruby and just add a little bit more 
and then we want to go in and get that green uh, and I believe I used this for the green so we're just going to add a little bit of the green there And I'm just dabbing some off because we do have a little bit of white space there. So essentially you're doing the same thing we did in the front just onto the side. And then we're going in with this guy and adding our dark green at the bottom. And here you go. You can see the the slant that I was talking about, just sort of slightly upward. This is slightly downward. That's that. Okay, now we're not looking for perfection, so if you're slightly off, that's okay. You can always do this again, don't worry about it. Like, just, yeah, go with the flow. I'm gonna add a little bit of the carmine in here too, just to sort of give it some semblance of what this front looks like, the juiciness and all that good stuff. It's gonna make it darker right about there. Okay, that's that. See, it looks so realistic already, doesn't it? Okay, so we can allow this to dry before we go back in to add our little seeds. But in the meantime, let's tackle our daisies. Now for the daisies, I like to use a combination of the number six and the miniature number one. And like I mentioned, I'm just taking a very watered down version of the Payne's Gray. You can also use maybe a very watered down version of Indigo. I'll leave that up to you. I've got both of them over here handy actually. So maybe I'll use the Indigo just because I got some nice pinks happening. Uh, the Carmine's adding some nice pinks, so let's do that. Oh, actually, I'm using the number six for the petals. I'm using this for the yellow. So let's not get it twisted. So washing off my brush properly. I'm gonna get some of that nice indigo on my brush. And I'm just using the tip of my brush to create these loose strokes. So one, I need a little bit more so you can see it better. One, two, three, leaving the center open so we can go in with our pink, sorry, yellow. I'm doing another one here, facing upward, then another one sort of very lightly peeking from the back. And I'm actually going to zoom in so you can see better. There we go. So you can see how that looks right there. I'm going to do a couple over here. You can see my strokes as I'm laying them down. They're very, very loose and light. I'm not giving it too much detail. so you can see better. Oh, actually, this is where the shadow would have gone. Okay, I guess I'll make the shadow over here then. Um, let's see. Oh, then we're also going to do a little bit of fluffing where I like to add a couple of dots here and there. I'm going to make it look like there's buds or tinier details to our flowers. This is an alternative to splatter. So if you're well accustomed or well versed with splatter, just go ahead and do that. That's that. 
I'm going to use my miniature and we're going to go ahead and get the centers in. So I've got some of that yellow on here. And I'll start with this guy because he's nice and dried and I'm just dotting all around. Leaving white space, dotting in this guy right here facing upward and this guy shyly looking at us from behind. And let's do some more here. Some over here. And just a little bit here. So we've got three on each side. That's great. And then I mentioned you can go in with the darker hue and just add it in. But what I would do is wait for this to dry up a bit before we do that. So while we're waiting for this to dry up a little bit, what we can do is go ahead and add our our seeds. And so for that, I'm using the miniature brush and I'm just getting my black, which is right here. Directly from my color kit. And then I'll do three maybe. So I'll do one over here at the top. Now what you can also do is go in with gouache and give the give these a little bit of a shine by just adding a little line to the left hand side maybe of it. I'll do another one here. You can even make these like little eyes and leave them like a cute like little summer watermelon slice that's like a character. There's an idea. Like that's cute, right? Except this one is a little extra sharp. Here we go, that's better. And then I'll do my third. And that's that. So I'll just do three. You can even do more if you want to. You can even sort of have one happening on the side because you know they're inside the nice juicy watermelon. And okay, so now we're on to the leaves and then we're pretty much done. So I've got some leftover green over here on my palette. So I'm just gonna use that. Um, the, for these, I like to have it muted, so more water, less color. This way, it's not overpowering the actual watermelon itself. And we've got just like cute little elements to it, just like how we have here, as you can see. But I would probably go even lighter than this one. So here we go, I'm just using the tip of my brush to kind of slightly connect some of these guys and then very lightly adding cute little leaves in between, pushing all the color down to the bottom of the leaf and then I'm even doing that little dot dotted bit that we did here with the flowers for the green. Just giving it some cute detail. Cute loose detail and then kind of trying to fluff it up in between as well. I'll add a leaf here. They're not realistic leaves, but again, we're doing a very, very loose style of painting. This is for fun. This is for people who are maybe just learning watercolor or you just want to create a cute little card and you were looking for an idea online. Here's an idea. Here's a sign. Let's do another one here.
and just adding a little bit of darker detail just to the bottom of them. So we have some nice dimension happening in our looseness. And then I think that's it. We are okay with stopping here if needed. I'm just adding a couple of dots. Um, you can add a splatter with the red as well if you want to. Oh, one more thing is the dark yellow that I mentioned for the for these guys. I'm just adding a couple of dots. Some over here. We don't want to cover up all the white space. I'm just literally lining the curve of these flowers. Perfect. Just tiny, small detail. And then last but not least, we're just going to do a little bit of a shadow and then we're, di we're done. So for the shadow, um, I'm just going to do a little damp stroke here or a stroke of water right here. And then maybe just curving a little bit around the flowers. And then going in with this brush, I'm going to get some of the leftover indigo that I have. And I'm just going to add it in to this area here. Now you can see because this is 25% uh, cotton, it has dried up already or it's semi dried up already. So we're just going to have to take the brush with the water again and just do this to kind of dampen things up and have it have the color move along downward. And then just to sort of give it that nice dark to light effect, I'm going to get a little bit of the Payne's gray directly on my on my brush and I'm just going in and I'm just adding it very lightly using the tip of my brush to get that nice beautiful bleed and then you can just sort of help it help it come down by just taking your brush making sure it doesn't have any water, leftover water on it, and just kind of lightly help it come down. I'm leaving the, the ends very, very loose because of the flowers that we did there. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more of this color, adding it more, adding a third sort of layer here again to get a nice gorgeous blend and then I'm just kind of lightly dotting it to the ends here I don't really need it there but just <clears throat> where the watermelon is is my main focus and that's that and that, my friends, is it. I'm just smoothening out most of this because aerial view, I would like to have more of it happening just mainly around the water, the watermelon as opposed to everywhere else. And I'm just adding these strokes to kind of give it loose effect. And we are done. So this is it. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought. I hope this was a nice, fun exercise for you. Uh, if you like this video, guys, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing to my channel as it really does help my channel grow. And if you do end up doing this uh, tutorial, I would love to see what you did. So please do tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. Follow me there as well, guys. I put out tons of... Uh, 
mini videos and then also like time lapses so if you're into things like that watching how this or some of my work evolves hop on over there and say hello to me and that is it um, if you do end up using the etcher watercolor postcards let me know what you guys thought uh, or think of it I really like it I think I have a card ready to go out to a friend and that's it thanks guys for watching we'll chat soon bye one thing I forgot to do so I'm back really quickly this is almost like a blooper at the end is a splatter so I got a little bit of the ruby and I'm going to get a little bit of a splatter in here So for those who enjoy splatter, here we go. I'm just trying to get a lighter splatter, so washed up most of the color. And that's that. Alright guys, now I'm truly done. Thanks for watching.